Hello again beer lovers, I'm Phil from Beer Heads and today we are joining Newark Camera, that's a campaign for real ale, on their minibus trip to Retford. First stop off is the brew shed where we're going to enjoy a couple of scoops before going down the backyard into the brewery that's just been established, Harrison's Brewery. This place has been uh, built from the ground up uh, by legendary brew tuber Harry Brew 69. I'm delighted to be having a word with him before we scoosh just around the corner to Beer Heads where I'm going to be asking the locals some beery topical questions. We'd love you to get involved in the discussion so please leave your comments below. We'd love to hear what you've got to say. If you haven't done already please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos and we hope you enjoy this one. Cheers! Which, uh, which me and a couple of other people set up uh, called Idle Valley. Uh, Idle Valley is where I basically learned to brew commercially, having brewed um, as a home brewer since uh, the late 90s, believe it or not, I was brewing before I left school. Um, so we set up Idle Valley in 2015, I think it was, pretty much the same time that Beer Heads opened up in Redford. And I'd only ever home brewed prior to that. So Steve Lewink and uh, put what little money we could lay our hands on into opening the brew shed as was, um, you can't use them to make beer with, they're now flavour additions, you couldn't just mash a load of black malt for instance and make a beer from it because you wouldn't be able to make any sugars for the yeast. It's just what's captured in there. And then we also add some wheat, a fair percentage of wheat, and the wheat is what gives it this little haze and it also uh, helps Here we are with uh, legendary brew tuber, brew tuber, brew tuber, Harry Brew 69. Thanks for a brilliant uh, presentation there, mate. I'd just like to ask you. You've come so far on your own now. It's been a brilliant process watching you on your YouTube channel. But what's your now you're at this stage, what's your plans for the future? Are you gonna stay local? Or are you gonna go a little bit further afield? Are you aiming on going national? What are your plans for me? Initially, uh, for Harrison's Brewery at least, uh, we wanna focus on producing beer mainly for our Pup the Brew Chef uh, and a few other uh, local publicans such as yourself perhaps who want to take some of the uh, offerings that we've got some of the new beers that we do uh, but i've got no intention of getting back into the wholesale market uh, like i was a few years back um, and then maybe in the future we might focus on uh, getting another pub locally yeah. in another town but uh, as far as we're concerned with the beer i just want to expand the range and uh, provide our customers with uh, a broader spectrum of variety on the bar with uh, more seasonals, more one-offs, and I basically just want to get man's dirty and do a little bit more of experimentation in the brewery. Yeah. That's the plan. Harry, you're a legend. Brilliant. And all the best, mate. Thank you very Good much, Phil. Cheers. Cheers. And cask, I'm sorry, I'd, I'd sooner rather have that any, any day of the year. Cask. Because 
Oh, I know, I should be honest and say it's too pound a pint cheaper at first. But secondly, don't like beer that's too cold and I don't like beer that's too gassy. And I really don't think the flavour is any better than cask beer. Well, I'd say 90% of the time it's cask, but occasionally keg has its place. I won't do food craft beer, it's just not my first choice. <laughs> Why? Because it's a little bit warmer. Cask every time. Why? Generally speaking, when you get cask beer, you know it's real ale. When you get keg, or key keg, or key cask, you're never really sure. Why? Well, sorry, Fuller's, London beer. I don't like drinking with, obviously, drinking stuff that's got no air on it. And uh, Magic Rock, just superb, superb beer. Brilliant. Oh, it's a no brainer. Fuller's, no Magic Rock. <laughs> because. Fuller's a traditional brewer, nothing wrong with the beers if you like premium bitters and, and such. But ESB, very, very nice. Magic Raw, classic, modern, new world hops, just great beers and much more to my taste these days. Oh, Magic Raw. Uh, they're much more interesting, they experiment. Fuller's are mundane. Magic Raw. Because you get more colours. Magic Rock. Fuller's is now owned by some Japanese conglomerate. Yeah. Magic Rock. Been to the brewery. Fantastic. And they've just been bought out by. Yeah, haven't they just sold about half? Half the shares or something. Yeah. Yep. So, Magic Rock. Magic Rock, very inventive. Fuller's very traditional, reasonable beer, but magic rock every time. Not really bothered either way, to be quite honest. Uh, both, both as good as one another. Oh, it's got to be on fine, doesn't it? I mean, come on. If I learned nothing else from you, Phil, what I did learn is that you need to taste the beer. A good friend of mine says, you don't drink with your eyes. And having seen and smelt findings, Phil, no, thank you. Just give it to me, natural. Tastes fantastic. More body, wonderful. Find every time. I see fine beer, uh, sorry, unfine beer, and it's essentially lazy brewing. Well, it's not, not the fans. I don't mind as long as it's good beer. It used to worry me five, ten years ago about unfine beer as a kind of a, uh, a money-saving exercise on the part of the brewer. But I think I would say now that I don't mind either, as long as they are well-brewed beers, well-kept, well-conditioned and well-kept in the pub. Well, what a cracking day. But what did we learn? Well, people prefer Magic Rock beer out of a cask, but they don't give a monkey's whether it's fine or not. See you next time.